Welcome everybody. Today, I have very special news. Today, we're going to prison. Whoa, 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 what are you, gay? Don't worry, it's not what you think. You might be wondering, why are my decorations still up, and why am I dressed up again? It's not Halloween anymore, right? Well, the reason for that is because, one, I personally believe that Halloween never f***ing ends! And also because I feel like it. It's very thematic for the story that I'm telling you today. Because today, the story takes place in prison. There are many dangerous prisoners behind those walls and bars. Some they keep held in solitary confinement, and some, well, some are locked up in very secret locations that you do not want to visit. There's a reason they're kept isolated from everybody else. And in today's story, me and my good friend Zach here will present to you this story about a prisoner who is just like that. The prison life isn't easy, and it can be very scary. So let's sit back, relax, and enjoy a very interesting story about a prisoner. Prisoner 959. Enjoy. Have you ever been hit with a feeling where time just stops? Will this making the most difficult decision of your life? I have. It was the most pressuring, stressful, and scariest decision I ever made. But I somehow managed the right choice. It was a very narrow escape. First things first. I'm a prisoner security officer working at a very dark but highly facilitated prison in Detroit. I'd have to say half of Hell's Spawn dwells here. The worst criminals you could ever imagine all decided to converge into one place. That place just so happened to be here. Let me tell you, this place is the most fucked up grime hole you could ever imagine. Think of a place with barely any rules, inhabited by unruly citizens. This is it. This is it. It turns you into a person you never thought you'd be. Your mind becomes easily desensitized and corrupt over the course of a month or so. The least cringeworthy crime somebody has committed was probably aggravated assault. On multiple counts. Oftentimes, me and the other guards would try and find somebody who had the lightest charge or charges on them when we got bored. If there were no child molesters to beat the shit out of for fun. Prison fights are on a daily basis. Riots used to be monthly rituals. Many of us used to wonder how the hell we survived for this long before we upgraded. We became so uptight. We are authorized to fire upon anyone who causes misconduct and try everything to keep things in order before we have to fire a shot. It really messes with your head and makes you forget proper ethics and reason. I've seen guards shoot prisoners just because they didn't like them. The cells get darker and colder the deeper you go into the facility. Some of them make you wonder if they're even supposed to be a whole cell. 
We sometimes traveled there since the prison fills up pretty quickly while the older ones take leave. The deepest hall had an ambience of dreadful darkness. The occasional rat squeal could be heard. The stereotypical moisture dropping sounds were present. You could sometimes hear the prisoners screaming and pitching a fit while losing their sanity. Just the feeling of the hall gave you the creeps. It was cold and able to send the chills down your body no matter how many times you've been down there. There was, however, one strange room that we noticed at the end of one of the halls. It was found in the depths of the cell block. It seemed to have an old steel bar for a handle. It had four strange looking locks, and there was a very faded square of what used to be a sign. I never knew what it once said, neither did the other guards. The only letters I could make out were O-O-R at the bottom right corner. Nobody that we knew had ever been in one of those doors, except for the very few highest ranking officials. Some of us had questioned the door. They were all told the same thing. That's classified. A rumor leaked that dead bodies made into a tomb were settled there but it wasn't solid enough for most of us to believe. We all just knew something wasn't right about that room. Today, a major prison riot broke out. Who knows what started it? It all seemed so planned out, so cleverly timed. Three guards were killed instantly with a giant mob of orange suits attacking everyone else in sight. Some had small, almost useless weapons which escalated into bigger and much more dangerous weapons. The guards' batons were taken and used to bash doors and their heads. A few of them somehow salvaged some firearms and were using them against us. The guards in the more populated rooms had no chance. There were so many groups wandering around either trying to let out other prisoners or find the emergency gun cache. It was hidden very well in the facility, but it wouldn't go undiscovered for long. It could eventually be found, especially with the determination of the prisoners. I ran into one of the top secret rooms which was opened, but deserted. I reached into an open drawer hidden under a desk in the corner of the room. There was a key. It wasn't like any key I'd ever seen. It was shaped like a skeleton key except the studs were shaped in strange thunderbolt-like patterns. There was a note next to it that said, Warning, authorized use for this key, or lethal force will be used. I somehow instantly knew what it was for. So I ran towards the depths of the jail while dodging incoming prisoner blows. I managed to throw a deadly nose break into one of them and slammed another. I don't remember how I got there. I must have blacked out from the fighting. As I stood at the end of the long hole cell hall, I felt a strange, suspenseful dread course through my entire body. The closer I neared the door titled OOR, the more nervous I felt. I quivered, probably from the coldness of the cell and the slight fear that was bothering me. The dripping of moisture must have been the loudest sound I had ever heard at that time. I felt lightheaded, wondering what I was about to experience. However, I didn't have much time. Whether I was going to hide in the room or bunker in for safety, I needed to get in. So I placed the key into the locks. It required effort to awkwardly twist the key. Each one had a loud breaking sound when they were unlocked. I paused. I felt very uncomfortable. I knew it had to be done. I grabbed the metal handle and pulled. It didn't budge. It required a lot more effort to be opened. It scraped against the ground and slowly creaked its way open. Steel grinding against the top floor. It produced an eerie echoing creaking sound. I went inside and closed the door until there was only a crack. It was dark. 
pitch dark, even though I could barely see the crack from the door. All I saw was black. The room seemed to be spacey enough to spread out your arms without touching the walls. I felt for a switch, lever, something, anything to produce even just a little light. I felt a string that seemed to be attached to something above me. I pulled on it. An old-fashioned metal hanging light shone from above. There, in front of me, was a steel cylinder. It was not only locked with a safe wheel and four other strange looking locks, but it was bolted shut, like it was never meant to be opened. Then, the answer to all my curiosity to what was in this room came upon me when I saw a metal peephole. It was locked close. It was placed about three feet above my head. I am 6'1". The cylinder towered over me. My height only reached half of that cylinder. I found a key lying out on a steel drawer nearby that I didn't notice due to the dark display I had been fantasizing about for the longest time. I placed the key into the peephole lock to see if it would work. To my surprise, it fit perfectly. I took off the lock and took a deep breath. This is it. No turning back. I slowly slid the peephole open. I felt like I couldn't move any part of my body besides my hand. Immediately, I saw two dim, scarred eyelids inside. Both eyes were not only scarred, but had a clear, previously cut gash down the middle. I froze for a second, but then after a bit, I said, Hello? Their eyes opened swiftly without warning. Their eyes were unlike anything I had ever seen. One was discolored and white as if it were a blind eye. The other was red, blood red. He responded with a very deep voice that came from his belly. Yes? Said a very deep, booming, raspy voice full of despair and hate the air filled with the sound of his speech. Hello? I stuttered. I was too scared to even move. Not only were the eyes scoring to look at, but the feeling of dread was upon me. You awake me. For what reason? He sounded quite angry. I, uh, I honestly don't know. The prisoners, they all just... Revolted. They overpowered us, and this is the only place that I could go. The inevitable deaths have come upon you. You only have one choice. The power and creepy feeling of his voice was enough to make you tremble in fear. No amounts of steel could protect you from this type of fear. Who are you? 959. Was all he said. Why do they keep you locked up in this chamber? If I must ask. Behind you. At this point, I was shocked and scared shitless. I was certain that there was actually someone behind me ready to kill me with their bare hands. I turned, and there was a metal cabinet nearby. I walked over to it, noticing that my feet were shaking, and opened it. Inside were many files. Open said Prisoner 959. The bellow of his voice startled me. I opened one file named Crime Scene Photos instantly. I was disgusted and grew sick to my stomach. One of the pages read, 12 Victims in Squatter Home Cellar. Next to it was a picture of bodies impaled through the mouth and out the coccyx. They were upside down, stripped, bloodied, and bearing almost no layers of skin. Their mouths were stretched wide open, and their jaws unhinged so that the poles which impaled them could fit. Some of them had absolutely no teeth, but bloody gums squeezing on the poles. Their eyes were rolled back into their head, and some of them were facing directly at the camera. 
The bloodshot whites of their eyes displayed the pain and agony that they must have gone through. Behind them, there was a message written in blood on the cellar concrete wall reading, Penance. I had never seen such a revolting picture in my life. You did all this? I trembled. They deserved it. Quietly replied the prisoner. I looked deeper, and it showed a picture of a cell from the prison. There was so much gore in the cells. I remember overhearing about this incident from the prisoners, but didn't know if it was actually true. There lay two of what seemed to be dead inmates on the ground, and one was nailed to the wall with a long metal piece from the bed. They were so terribly mangled that they couldn't have been recognized as human. Oh my god. This actually happened? It's true? Yes. I looked at the other files, attempting to look for information on this sick fuck. I read that his real name was unknown but his famous alias seemed to be... Karn. His guest's age was 30. He was a massive, hulking, 7.1 feet tall, weighing at 304 pounds. I couldn't believe it. Taking on someone of his magnitude was impossible without enough firepower. His early life is completely unknown. He has 103 confirmed murders, although he potentially has claimed 170. Skipping along his biography, he apparently has killed many known criminals. He had killed two cops. He was caught in the act of filleting a fully conscious man alive after people heard the overwhelming screams from nearby, and it took six tasers to take him down. He survived two shotgun shells to the side and the stomach. All the victims and crimes were kept confidential to keep the public from fearing the streets. Now I can see why this man, or thing, is kept in a secret room with a very secure chamber. Why? Why did you do this? I yelled in disbelief. They deserve to die. They deserve to suffer. They deserved to rot. Why did they deserve to die? I was on the verge of insanity from what I had seen. They inflicted others with pain. They must suffer penance. I had to think fast. The prisoners are closing in fast. There's no chance of hiding back here for long. There are still rotting prisoners here. My gun won't protect me against all of them. My hand-to-hand -hand skills are good, but I can't go on forever. I have myself cornered. Here and there, I can faintly hear gunshot fire outside. The last possible choice I could have is to release the prisoner. I could only hope he killed only those who deserved it, though not in the methods that he did it. If he would help me, it could be my only chance of getting out alive. If I help you out of there, will you help me? No. I will help the ones who can be victimized by these heaps of meat. Does that include me? I was praying at this point for a miracle. Yes. I quickly grabbed the strange looking tool from the cabinet. It seemed like it would take out the bolts from the door. I took out the bolts. They clanged on the floor. I then carefully unlocked the locks, one by one. Very slowly, but carefully. Hearing nothing but the sound of the key jiggling the pins. Then came the final step. The safe wheel. It looked very threatening and uninviting. But I had no choice. I turned it multiple times, using all of my might, thinking it would never open. Suddenly... A very loud, piercing clang noise echoed throughout the room. It scared me and made me fall back. And I watched, as the door slowly opened, producing a loud creaking. Inside, there the prisoner stood. Just as his file described, he was a giant. 
wearing ragged old orange clothes, greased up to the point where it was almost gray. He was a mess. His face was terribly scarred. Not a single patch of skin on his face was smooth. His malicious eyes stared back at me. One of them white, one of them red. They stared at me from behind a mask, which covered his nose and mouth. It had straps that wrapped around the back of his head. It seemed to have parts that went into his mouth. Instantly, I referenced it to Hannibal Lecter. The mask was probably used to keep him from biting. His scars left you speechless with fear. He had very long black hair, which lengthened down to his waist. There were chains all around his limbs. The inside of the steel door had a couple of dents that were made for, well, uh, a human being. I thought to myself how I would unchain him without freaking the hell out. But just then, he fucking broke the chains right out of the chamber. Just like that. A human being ripping the chains out from the chamber with ease. He stepped out of the chamber. His boots produced a loud thump that you could feel on the ground. He towered over my head. He came up to me staring me in both eyes, into my soul, and past it. He was extremely enraged. I felt so frightened I just couldn't move. I was shivering throughout my whole body. I wouldn't dare budge or twitch. He put his hands forward. I thought he was going to wring my neck. But he didn't. He was showing his handcuffs so I could unlock them. I did so for him. Then slowly sidestepped out of the way. He just kept staring at me, staring at me with a look as if he wanted nothing more than to gouge my eyes out. But he slowly turned and went on his way. He opened the door with almost no effort and thumped down the cell block hall. I watched him as he made his way down. All of a sudden, two prisoners arrived around the corner and darted around the block. That proved to be the biggest and last mistake of their lives. Immediately, they saw Karn and just froze. But worse than I ever did. They must have known about the incident in the cell. They were too shocked to budge. Their eyes widened. Unexpectedly, the giant drew back his hand and backhanded his fist into the side of a prisoner's head. His head smacked off the door of one of the whole cells and drew blood all over his face. 959 grabbed the second prisoner's face and smashed the back of his head against the other side where the wall was. Instantly, brain matter, blood, and pieces of skull blotched everywhere, making a gory mess of the wall and floor. I was speechless. I couldn't say or do anything from this point. 959 killed two men with little effort. By the time I collected myself and regained what was left of my sanity, a few minutes later, I started down the hall towards the direction that 959 went. It wasn't long before the commotion in the prison went from angry riots to blood-curdling screams, cries for help, pleas for mercy, and groans of agony. I saw the remains of prisoners scattered all around. As the halls and rooms grew smaller, all I could see were the bloodied fragments covering orange clothing. Some were impaled on bars in the same fashion as before, which were made from a ripped off cell door. Gunshots fired, but it seemed to do nothing about the screams. I ran towards the path of dismembered limbs and corpses. Not a single life was spared. No quarter, no warning, no mercy. Every prisoner was grotesquely murdered in cold blood. One of them was hung up over a railing by an orange pair of pants. The only other bodies that weren't mangled as badly as the orange suits were the guards. Most of their corpses were intact. The ones that were still alive were scared shitless. And maybe they were saved. When I caught up to 959, 
I could see him stomp on a prisoner's head, squishing it like a grape. He was pulling a prisoner off a guard by his neck. He picked him up, slammed him against the wall, and squeezed until his neck made a loud cracking sound. He was killed instantly. Another inmate attempted to rush at 959 with the butt of a shotgun. He oh. rammed it into his back, but it barely even budged him. In response, prisoner 959 turned around and grabbed the gun. The inmate tried to punch him in the face, but he blocked it with his right hand, grabbing it and struck the elbow with his left hand, dislocating it. The inmate screamed in pain. The 959 then proceeded to bludgeon him to a shattered, boneless pulp with the shotgun until it broke apart. He then shoved the barrel into the inmate's abdomen. A hiding prisoner attempted to grab me from behind. I turned, elbowing him in the face twice, and bent over to grab his right leg. I rolled forward and pulled back as hard as I could, dislocating his limb. There was no chance of him getting up. However, Karm didn't think the same thing. He grabbed the prisoner's intact left leg, straightening it, and crunched it into his body. The prisoner screamed in pain and agony from the shock. 959 walked on like it never happened. Me and the other guards were able to get as situated as we could once the SWAT team had arrived. However, once they made it, 959 was long gone. Prisoner 959 has never been heard of since. He had disappeared without a trace. He left no signs of leave after the bloodbath of the jail. Investigators and authorities have searched up and down the city, inside and out. Eyes were kept open for more gruesome reports. They have found nothing. I can honestly see why they have sought him tirelessly. He could be anywhere doing anything to anybody.